Hey everybody, welcome back to another interesting, kind of weird episode of um, like a Tech Tuesday, 27, 28, didn't really track that, but nevertheless, we're not going to answer questions, we're going to answer other questions. A lot of the stuff that, this is more of a tech moment, as it goes, that we that we run into, a lot of the calls we get in here on the tech line, and we figured just get a couple texts and talk about some tech stuff, I'm talking, you know, techie tech, techie tech, tech, tech. tech. So, TJ. Yeah. No, no, I'm Tim. This that's that's TJ. Yeah. So you probably talked to either one of us. Most likely him. I'm not really allowed to do phone calls. Um. Anywho, let's see. What do you get asked a lot? What's um, your What's your number one thing that folks be calling in about, like in your mind? How do I download my software or update my software? I'd say get closer to the mic. Big one is updating software. Yeah, um, yeah. We do have a few videos on it, but uh, that still seems to be a pretty big one. Um, right on. Making adjustments as far as drivability issues seems to be a pretty big issue uh, mm-hmm. that people come across. So we'll start at the top. Yeah, the software stuff. I mean, what what do you see folks commonly getting wrong on the um, the updating of a software? It's usually they are not unzipping the file before they put it on their flash drive. Mm. Uh, seems to be a pretty big thing. They just take the download, put it right onto the flash drive, and try to update it, and causes chaos. Yeah, I get a few errors, I'm sure. Um, so you download it, right? You yep. find it on your drive, extract it. You open it up. There's a few folders and a bin file. Copy those to your thumb drive, preferably around a 32 gigabyte. I've had the best luck with. Then we just what stab it in top of the um, handheld, and it does its own little job. And then we uh, go in and send it to the ECU and run the wizard again, and poof, all the newest features and functions right there available at your fingertips. That or uh, what I've been doing is just right clicking on the zip file and uh, doing a extract to straight to my flash drive and that seems to work pretty well true takes some steps out makes it a little simpler oh it, it, that is functional but it, depending on your computer and your usb drive that actually could slow down the data transfer rate and corrupt it a little bit so ah. if you got an older slower thumb drive also i've seen with people using usb 1.0s because the data transfer rate's really slow so it kind of internally times out and then just doesn't copy all the information and gives you like a a red label as we've been calling it lately so it'll say hey you know Config something something I and I timeout whatever fourteen different errors like what's your, what's the next one on your list you really you really be seeing like every day when you pick up the phone thank you for calling this tech this is T J how may I help you uh, my throttle body is dumping fuel down into the intake and the car will not start it is backfiring mm. what's the solve. Uh, couple different things you check your uh fuel offset on your table which mm-hmm. is in the new 2.10 software big fan huge fan um the other thing you can try messing with is the fuel prime percent if it's dumping too much fuel on startup you're gonna have major startup issues and you're gonna have all those problems yeah true yeah um and older generations of software if your ect is not plugged in it'll think it's at negative 40 and it will up the injection pulse width to like 200 or some crazy number now we got it set to where if it's unplugged it goes like 122 so it ain't trying to wash your motor down right. um just as a safety thing for failed sensors damaged sensors or just straight didn't plug it in also i see that too if they install the system it's updated and all that and they don't even run the wizard this goes straight to getting after it starting it or they made a improper ignition selection because you could have one type ignition hooked up and tell it it's another type and in some cases depending on the combination it will run it'll get signal but it you know sees that signal crazy so it'll do all kinds of weird fuely stuff or if you got the wrong table selected if you got a in a you know stage two truck cam you got off a swap meet special somewhere and you're like this is a race cam because i'm going to race it that's not what you do there. Race cam stuff is really the fuel table is populated for low vacuum. Uh, and there's a few other parameters too, more airflow, this, that, and the other. So you want to 
kind of get more of an appropriate if if you put the oh there's a train i wonder if i always wonder if you can hear that not sure not sure i can hear it in my sleep literally mm-hmm. so with that you know if you select race and it's not starting up or it's starting up and it's fat fat go just go to the settings and select mild if it's still too much go to stock if it's still too much go into the fuel table offset and bring it down a little bit if you got the newer software um, verify everything's plugged in. Verify your timing's good because sometimes the timing be so far off it'd be doing some wild stuff too. Also, if you um, if you have to wonder if you have a race cam, you don't. Generally, don't. I've I've never actually successfully had to need the race cam, even on like a super high lift BTR Stage Four F thirty five mega cam from whoever. Timing. Big timing. Thing. That's a big thing. That's a commonly poorly done thing. Yes. Nothing in some folks, but dropping a distributor, old HEI, Vacuum Vance distributor in versus one of ours. There is a few extra steps that are a bit different. So it's not a massive deal. It's just there's a few extra steps, which we made some videos on. Um, you can do some math. You can watch a couple videos and successfully kind of get her just really dialed in. Pretty close. Yep. Yeah. It's close, close enough to start up and then this little adjustment and you're good. What about wiring? What kind of errors have you seen on the tech line with uh, folks having wiring problems? Don't yeah. laugh too hard. We've you seen some wild it. stuff here recently. You name it, we've seen it. Um, interesting, uh, interestingly enough, we don't have a whole lot of full harness uh, things. Right, right. We did have one this week. Uh, look like spaghetti in the floorboard. Yep, that happens. Um, but sometimes you'll have that happen. Um, honestly, we, we get a lot of people that hook up the V main uh, to things that it definitely shouldn't be hooked up to. It is a 12 volt power source, but it is not meant to be powered, or it is not meant to power specific things. Yes, um, can definitely, you know, do a little bit of research into that in the instruction manual. It's pretty clear. Yeah. V main, no. Yeah, it only really, we only recommend hooking it to like our Hall Effect distributor on the positive switch 12 volt wire. That's actually in the dis- uh, description as well. Um, or if you run like a hyper spark, you can run it to trigger that hyper spark. No biggie. Um, but another thing though would be um, mm-hmm. my instruction manual says this wire is blue, but it's red or it's orange or it's this color. It's brown. Could yeah, be brown. brown or purple. Um, our. We try to keep our website up to date with the newest instructions. So if you end up getting an old set of instructions with your kit, your wires aren't met, mashing up. Um, best thing to do is don't assume anything. Just give us a call, and we would be happy to walk you through to make sure that the wiring is correct or the pinouts are correct. Yep. Much more preferable than you calling us and saying, hey, I hooked this up. It didn't seem right, but I followed your directions anyways, and then, you know. We have to sort through some wiring issues. No, the way I see it, the moment you the moment you reach in your box and you pull a question mark out, you might as well just give us a call, mm-hmm. really, because absolutely a three minute conversation about what to do with something versus wondering about it, hooking up, hooking it up wrong, doing this, doing some crazy stuff, reinventing the wheel just to be like, I really should have just plugged in over here versus let me remap my entire car. It's it's a lot easier just to have that conversation. Hey, TJ, I got this red wire. What do I do with it? You know, like, what's it say on there? No, no. Where does it come from? Over here. Ah, that's probably pinned this. Is it this gauge wire? Yes. Okay, cool. When you turn the thing on, it should do this. Okay, yeah, it does that. It should hook up over here. We we do that all the time. So, yep. we don't mind. We got access to things. And it's a lot of the same access we, uh, a lot of the same resources we have to answer the questions are is actually the same stuff that people have available to them. Like, stuff off the website, uh, we do get a bit of a leg up though because we've all done systems and we've all tuned things here and worked with other systems in the aftermarket and kind of learned from that like some of those lessons are they cost money to learn like you have to go purchase a very expensive system and do the install yourself for one of your customers before you really understand it better so you know coming from that kind of industry we're all we got a little bit of a leg up on some folks but I mean we're not boasting about that it's just that we're just well read and ran into a lot of problems with other systems and our systems and helping people diagnose and solve these things what kind of weird fuel stuff have you seen like as in fuel system wow wow <laughs> where does my fuel pressure regulator go uh, yeah it is a 
You know, we get a lot of guys that go from carb to EFI, and they are absolutely used to having the regulator before the carburetor. Um, but that's I do a that. Carbureted system. Mm-hmm. I do that, mm-hmm. but I, I got different equipment. Right, right. Yeah, there's different ways to hook it up. Um, totally is. But with our system, and if you're buying a master kit that everything is our system, there is a, a way that is preferred to hook it up so to get the best out of it. There are different ways to do it using different parts. Mm-hmm. But keep it simple. Keep it simple. Fuel comes from the pump to the throttle body. Well, actually, it's gravity fed from the tank to the pump through some filters and such. Throttle body to the regulator where it's restricted, free flowing back to the f- tank. If you set your your um, your fuel pressure regulator up for forty three and a half psi, you hook your return line up and you get ninety. It's a good chance you got a restriction in your return line. And another way to test it, if you're using like um, one of our pressure transducers, you can actually put it on the return side of the EC, uh, on the fuel pressure regulator, and just see what the pressure is there. It should be between 0 and 5 PSI within an acceptable range because, you know, there's the surface friction of the interior of the line and the length and the weight and how fast it's flowing, including the how your tank is designed and what size it is too i mean there's a lot of factors in that but yeah zero to five ps on the return side about 43 and a half on the pressure side too easy handhelds handhelds yeah yeah yep. so not so much the programming of the handheld but like the connection timeout that's yes. a so one thing if you got a screen that's doing weird crazy stuff pull the screen protector off the thing We've seen that actually helps that out. We've we had one this earlier. It was talk about self tuning. It was self everything in itself all it at once. It wrote an entire tune. It a uh, poor tune. Yeah, oh, it was horrible. Uh, good enough for a small block Ford. So, <laughs> anyways, pulled the film off of it. Right to act and correct. No problems. No sweat. No nothing. These th- these screens are kind of expensive, even for us to manufacture because we're trying to get a good screen and at a good quality and it not like melt in the sun or just turn off randomly or whatever else you can imagine a screen doing but um yeah try to take the screen protector off as yours is acting up yep the uh connection timeout that gets done by voltage usually that that'll there's a little can bus chip in there a little ic chip that if it takes a big hit from voltage like your key 12 volt source is from dirty voltage, but you can't really have any other good sources, and you're like on your second screen because of a connection timeout, hook it up to a relay. Whatever switch 12-volt source you got, use that to trigger a relay, and then pipe in some good, clean power from the battery to power that screen or that switch 12-volt wire. And you, that issue generally goes away unless you got something crazy happening in your system. Bad grounds, weird alternator, crazy starter situation that's this killing the whole system with voltage that generally the handhelds go bad due to voltage i've got a first generation the first one old school look uh no gps not even a serial number on it it's so old still going the one in my tahoe same thing that was from the same generation of very very old considered considered to be the weakest handheld we have I just wanted to use it as an experiment to see if I make a clean voltage path, will that screen go bad? 23 or 24,000 miles later, the camper's still going strong, same handheld. The uh, Tahoe, this is the third or fourth week I've been running that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And no issues there. Runs like a champ. Does its job. Um, Super proud of that because it was returned or old items, outdated stuff cobbled it together put it on a motor and mind you all these things were returned items um works perfectly i actually daily drive it so when i go to food city i'm driving my tahoe with a kill shot on it one thing i would probably add in there with the uh using a relay for the screen as a safety is Mm -hmm. um, using a relay on your 12 volt key for a few specific groups of people if you're have a fiberglass kit car if you have a car that has a wiring harness that is 
That's what I meant. The, the switch 12 volt yeah. wire. Sorry. Uh, you know, if, if your wiring harness is, is old and original and your car's from 1960 or 70 and your wires are cracking, you're not quite sure what's clean and what's not. Just be, play it on the safe side. Put a relay in it so you're not causing yeah. yourself a headache and like trouble bucks. down the road. Yep. Too easy. O2 sensors. Mm-hmm. If you think you got a bad O2 sensor, unplug the thing, clear your learn data, start it up. If it's running good, maybe a little fat because of the fuel table, and, or you get your offset just right and it's good, and you're wondering if it's your O2 sensor without diving into ADAC and voltage and weird stuff like that to diagnose it, which is easy for me, but not easy for everybody as it goes, because I know what I'm looking for. A lot of people, they've never fooled with that much, so eh, it's a thing. So what we could do is uh, unplug it, clear to learn table, start it up, see how it does. It's not going to run the uh, O2 sensor at all. Then plug the thing in. If it goes, if it if it accepts it and it goes in a closed loop and it starts running poorly, get another O2 sensor. Call us up. If it's within warranty, holler at us. We'll be like, yeah, let's get this swapped out. No biggie. If not, I think it's a 17025 part number for a Bosch 4.9 LSU at the local O'Reilly's. I think they're between 60 and 80 bucks. Yep. If it's if you're outside of warranty, they plug right in. They're fine. What would you say for uh, adjust early on adjustments to get something to fire? with small block versus big block because we seem to seems that the big block Chevy guys have a little bit more trouble right off the bat getting these things fired up. Well, there's a, there's a coefficient value that adjusts the fueling of the table by cubic inches of displacement. And um, when you get into the big block ter- for, territory, it starts to get way on out there. So you may have to see yourself on the newer so- the newer firmware adjusting the tables down a little bit because I've seen more big blocks be richer right out the box than anything else. If you don't want to update it, re- reduce the cubic inches of displacement of your motor. It moves that scaling down just a smidge. Um, that's the biggest things I see with that. And then tip-in fuel is usually kind of a bit of a headache with big blocks because, you know, big displacement, big um, big headache. But it's just the thing, if you got a wild cam and a big block and all that, you want to go get a tune. Call Willie, call Pneumatic Dino, call one of them cats that does some remote tuning. They get you right. But yeah, I, th- I think that pretty much wraps us up. I mean, we're about out of recording time anyways, and we're looking pretty snazzy down here. This should give this should give Benjamin plenty of stuff to edit and then send out into the ether of the universe. That is true. But we have to make sure that we tell everybody what this is for, because nobody's <clears throat> not going to. It's for the people. I should I should put it on my hand. It says for the people right here. Do it, right. Ben. Do it just right yep. here. Ah, I demand you. Oh, thanks, everybody. I'm Tim. This is TJ. See you now. <laughs>